Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support, please subscribe. The Shocking Execution of Sir Thomas More During the reign of Henry VIII, there were many important scholars and writers around in Tudor England. However, one of the most important was Sir Thomas More. More was a man who stayed true to his faith and today is seen as a celebrated historian who wrote with grace and elegance. However, he was close to the king, but this did not stop Henry from ordering his execution. The issue with Thomas More was that he opposed the Protestant Reformation, and for this also opposed Henry VIII's treatment of the church in England. And for this he paid the ultimate price, being beheaded on Tower Hill in July of 1535. Thomas More was destined for the top of Tudor politics from a young age, his father gave him a good start in life, being a lawyer, and he stayed in the household of the then Archbishop of Canterbury, John Morton. Following his childhood, where he was educated well, he attended the University of Oxford and followed in his father's footsteps becoming a lawyer. He also then later rose to prominence in London and caught the attention of the monarchy. Alongside Thomas Wolsey, he travelled to Rome on a diplomatic mission to see the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V. It was around this time that he wrote his history on previous King Richard III, which solidified Richard's reputation as a bloodthirsty tyrant who murdered his nephews, and this is seen as a rather important book. He also wrote his most famous work, Utopia, during this time too. But, in 1521, he was knighted and made an under-treasurer of the Exchequer. During this time, he also then became a secretary and a close advisor to King Henry VIII, and he became a prominent and influential member at court. He was in charge of writing official documents for Henry's court, and was involved in also foreign affairs, as well as becoming the High Steward for Oxford and Cambridge Universities. He was a man who had many talents, also becoming an MP and later the Speaker of the House of Commons, a prestigious position in the democracy of England. He rose to power at the expense of Cardinal Wolsey and he became the Lord Chancellor in 1529. At this point in time, he was one of the most important people in the whole of the country and held a very prestigious office, sharing a positive relationship with the King. But Within five years, he would be executed after a spectacular fall from grace. Moore himself was a prominent and strong supporter of the Catholic Church, and it was during Henry VIII's reign that the King's love life would lead to a huge conflict between the Catholic Church and the King himself. Moore viewed the Protestant Reformation occurring across Europe as very dangerous, and he even went further arresting anyone who preached these words of the new faith, and also possessed a translated Bible. He took great offence to William Tynesdale's English Bible, and there was a number of accounts of persecutions of Protestants during Moore's time as Chancellor. John Fox accused him of torture, and even himself inflicting torture onto heretics. It was said Moore tied them to a tree and whipped them, and then forced people on the rack for their religion. He was also accused of ordering several burnings in Smithfield wrapped up in religion. This was the standard sentence for heresy at the time, and it was during this time that England was rocked by great religious turmoil between the Protestant and Catholic churches, and it was Henry VIII who the blame can be levelled at. The King had been married to Catherine of Aragon for decades, However, his eye was caught by Anne Boleyn, the lady who would become his second wife. However, Anne stated that she would not engage with Henry in a relationship until he had solved his problem of his first marriage. The king appealed to the Pope for an annulment, but this was refused and Moore supported the Pope in this, and he refused to sign a letter asking the paper to annul Henry's first marriage. At this time, it was a crime to support another authority in the church except the kings, and together, Moore and Henry argued greatly over church laws. In 1531, a law was passed for all clergy to accept Henry's role as a supreme head of the Church of England. Moore himself refused to do this, 
refusing to sign the oath of supremacy. With this, he started to fall greatly from favour inside of court. On the 16th of May 1532, Moore resigned from his position as Lord Chancellor as his religious views and opposition to the King's marriage and the Reformation forced his resignation. He even went further in 1533, refusing to attend the marriage of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, and despite writing to the King to wish them well, his non-attendance was seen as a sign of protest against the new Queen and Henry took severe action. Thomas More was charged with taking bribes and nothing was proven, but this did not stop people trying to manufacture his downfall. On the 13th of April 1534, he was invited to appear to swear his allegiance to the Act of Succession once more. He accepted Parliament's right to proclaim Anne Boleyn as Queen, but continued to reject the King's supremacy over the Church. And this was in a sense Thomas More signing his death warrant. His enemies at court began to collect evidence against him, and he was accused of treason and imprisoned rather suddenly inside the Tower of London. During his imprisonment, Thomas Cromwell came to visit him a number of times, pleading for him to accept the King's prominence over the church, but Thomas More continued to refuse. He was then placed on trial on the 1st of July 1535 in front of a panel of judges. The panel was made up of Anne Boleyn's father, brother and uncle, and More said he could not be convicted if he did not explicitly deny Henry's position as a supreme head of the church, and he refused to answer questions on this. Cromwell then called Richard Rich, a member of court, to testify against Moore, and he said he had in fact denied Henry's role, and for this it then took the jury 15 minutes to sentence him as guilty of treason. Moore, after hearing the verdict, claimed the act of supremacy went against Magna Carta. However, he was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, which was the usual sentence for a traitor. However, due to his former relationship with the king, the king commuted the sentence to a more straightforward beheading. Thomas More's execution occurred on the 6th of July 1535. It was said that, about nine, he was brought out of the tower, his hair was long, his face pale and thin, and he carried a red cross in his hands. He often lifted his eyes to heaven. A woman met him with a cup of wine, and he refused it, saying, Christ at his passion drank no wine. Another woman came up to him crying, and Moore said, For an hour the king will rid me. He then arrived at the scaffold, which was on Tower Hill, a site of public execution in London, in which many met their fate. It was said, when he came to the scaffold, it seemed ready to fall, whereupon he said merrily to the lieutenant, Pray sit, see me safe up, and as to my coming down, let me shift for myself. He then went prepared to speak to the crowd, but was interrupted by the officials, and he told the crowd to only pray for him, and witness that he died for the Catholic Church as a faithful servant of God and the King. He was then forced to kneel, and repeated a psalm with devotion, and he then asked the executioner for his forgiveness. Standing there with his axe, Moore kissed him, and said, Pick up thy spirits, man, and be not afraid to do thine office. My neck is very short. Take heed, therefore, thou strike not a ray for having thine honesty. Sir Thomas More then laid his head on the block, and he tucked his beard to one side. He then smiled to the crowd, before sharply the executioner's axe fell, and in one swift blow his head was taken off. To warn fellow people about the dangers of going against the king, his head was then taken to London Bridge and placed on a spike. However, it was later then thrown into the river. It was said his daughter, Margaret, brought his head after it was salvaged, and it was kept in a lead box. So one of the most influential members of Henry VIII's court, Sir Thomas More, was executed in front of a huge crowd on Tower Hill, just outside the Tower of London. His crime was nothing more than sticking to his own convictions and beliefs, and despite being stubborn, he faced his death with bravery and determination. His death was one that caused shocks across Tudor England, 
and it really did cement Henry VIII's legacy as a brutal and feared king. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.